what did you do before owning an F45 studio? So I have, uh, I was a cop. Uh, I was a cop uh, and um, I had years of experience uh, working in the banking industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have served in the U.S. military and I'm still serving in the U.S. military as a, uh, as a National Guard. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, that's what I do. Do you feel like you took any um, skills from your previous jobs to F-45? Absolutely. Uh, I think uh, as, a as a prior mil military, uh, you know, the discipline, um, yeah. leadership, um, you, know, uh, you know, and everything that I've learned from my law enforcement, my, my military, uh, and my degrees has really, really helped me to strain uh, what I can do for my members. You, sometimes you just have to be a little bit more creative. Yeah. Um, you, you, you just have to be, you know, don't be too cheap, but you know, um, you know, a lot of people is that I invested a lot just for my outdoor studio. I invested almost go to uh, 30 to $40,000 just wow. to build my outdoor studio. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the people would be like, why would I want to, to put that much money, right? Uh, but members, they, they can see it. Mm -hmm. They can see how much that you put, put up. Um, but ultimately, that, that's how you can still keep and build more of your, that your member base. Yeah. If you're just doing the bare minimum and bringing the bare minimum weights outdoor and, you know, or maybe like self-coaching what you believe, it's F45, but you're not really carrying on that F45 traditions, yeah. right? Or that benchmark, then eventually members will either pause their membership or members will just walk away because they feel like, what's the benefit of me paying $180 or $20 a month, uh, but you're just giving me the bare minimum, right? Exactly. Uh, so you have to see where yourself are aligned with what you can put forth for your, for your mem members. Exactly. If you're not providing something unique, they could do it themselves or go somewhere else. So, yeah. Right.